And this is the last part of the narrated lecture for that chapter 18. We're going to look at hydrolysis of protein. This is the reverse of making those proteins. So the peptide bonds are hydrolyzed to yield back to the building blocks, so the amino acids. So how does it work? Well, digestion of protein in the diet, well, this is going to be where we have hydrolyzing of peptide bond that happen in the stomach and in the small intestine. This is catalyzed by enzyme, which is going to be our next chapter, and the amino acids are absorbed through the wall of the intestine. Chemists might hydrolyze the protein by heating it with hydrochloric acid, which is one of the chemicals that we have in the stomach to help the digestion of proteins. How does it work right here? Just very, very basic. You see the peptide bond is going to be broken by hydrolysis. And this is going to show you that when you break that bond, you go back to the two separated amino acids. Denaturation is the loss of the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure of the structure, but it does leave the primary structure of protein intact. We're going to see some examples. Uh, most of the time, solubility is often decreased by denaturation. Enzymes will lose their activity, and other proteins are not able to carry out the biological function once they are denatured. Most denaturation are irreversible, but when possible, renaturation will be accompanied by a recovery of the biological activities. So we just look at the different structure, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Remember, when you have denaturation, you don't change the primary structure. But sometimes, misfolding of protein leads to abnormal secondary and tertiary structure, and that will compromise the function of the protein. So this is just an example showing you, instead of being well organized on the left, my protein, if denatured, will be very loose and not able to properly function. So some example, you need to know the agent that can cause denaturation, heat. Just think about, you are cooking an egg, and you look at the egg white. The egg white will solidify. Can you go back? No, you can't. Mechanical agitation, same thing. One example, again with some eggs, when you actually beat up the egg white, it's going to make that foam, and there's no way you can go back to it. Other agents, such as detergent, even low concentration of detergent can disrupt those association of the hydrophobic side chain. Organic compound, polar solvent, will interfere again with the hydrogen bonding and will denature the proteins. But we also have a pH change and that can be more acidic or more basic. As well as inorganic salts, high concentration of ions can disturb the salt bridges. This is the concept map, just a summary of everything you've learned about those proteins. Uh, <clears throat> Remember, they are made of amino acid, and we look at the different uh, configuration based on the secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure of this protein. And I want to go back here, just PS change, just a simple application or even the heat. Um, if you are stung by uh, a bee, a wasp, even a stingray, or if you are stung by jellyfish, well, you do know that if you apply a good amount of heat, of course, you don't want to burn yourself, but keeping your hand, for example, if you're stung by a bee in your hand, in the warmer possible water you can withstand, that's going to help denature the protein in the venom. Same thing for most of the jellyfish sting. Uh, people would know that if you urinate shishi on a sting, that will reduce the pain, and that is because it denatures the protein. Now, I still want to say one thing interesting, especially here in Hawaii, if you do get stung by a manowar, then do not shishi on it. Ammonia will make it worse. You do need to use vinegar. The reason is because the pH of vinegar is acidic, and it's the one that is needed to denature the protein of the venom that is uh, left behind the sting. And that's the end of this chapter.